In problem number 45 of section 30.3, we're asked to find a formula for the arc length um, in terms of polar coordinates. So if we suppose instead of just an arbitrary parameterization of um, some curve, that we're actually given parameterization of the curve in specifically in polar coordinates. Uh, so where we're um, describing any point uh, x, y uh, by Two things. One, the radius from the or, or the uh, length of the line from the origin to uh, the point, which we'll call R, and uh, the angle between the positive x-axis and um, and the line that gave us the distance R. So we can write this as um, instead of x y as R theta. So. If we want to show that um, arc length is equal to this thing, so arc length assuming from uh, where theta takes on values now from A to B, uh, then uh, we'd want to first compute, figure out what dr d theta is. Now, if we look at the formula for the conversion to um, from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, uh, see that can consider this as a function of theta. So we say that x of uh, some point theta, so as we change, um, so we have some curve here. Um, then as theta changes, well, our x value is going to change, and it's going to be equal to some function r of theta, which will give the value of um, uh, the length of the line from the origin to the point. Uh, times cosine of theta. And similarly, we'll have um, y of theta equal to r of theta times uh, sine of theta. Now, we do know that arc length uh, is equal to this formula. So the integral from a to b uh, square root of um, 1 plus, or square root actually, of uh, dx d theta quantity squared plus dy d theta squared with respect to theta. So this is just the um, usual arc length formula, though we sometimes see it in a slightly different, um, written in a slightly different way. And we're just replacing theta with t since see that our uh, parameterization, or our uh, curve is now parameterized uh, just by theta. So if we f let's figure out what dx d theta and dy d theta are. All right, so dx d theta we use the product rule, is r prime of theta times cosine of theta plus r of theta times the derivative of cosine, which is minus sine of theta. And dy d theta uh, will be r prime of theta sine of theta plus r of theta cosine of theta. All right, so finally we need to figure out what dx d theta squared and dy d theta squared are. Uh, and just go ahead and add those together. So dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared is equal to, uh, well, we'll have r prime of theta cosine of theta minus, let me write this a little bit lower, so minus r of theta times sine of theta, that squared plus r prime of theta, sine of theta, plus 
r of theta, cosine of theta, and also squared. So if we uh, multiply out the first term, this is r prime of theta, uh, r prime of theta, cosine of theta, times, uh, or so r prime of theta squared, so let's just write that dr d theta. dr d theta squared times cosine squared of theta. And now we have the mixed term, so minus 2 uh, dr d theta times r of theta times cosine of theta times sine of theta. And the last term will be plus r of theta squared times sine squared of theta. All right, and similarly, we'll multiply out the second term. And it gives us dr d theta squared times sine squared of theta uh, minus uh, sorry, not minus, plus 2 dr d theta times r of theta times cosine of theta times sine of theta. And in the last term, we're just left with r of theta squared uh, times cosine squared of theta. All right, after all that messy algebra, we get a lot of nice cancellations since if we look at these two terms, see that dr d theta just factors right out, and you're left with cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. Uh, by the Pythagorean theorem, that's just one, so we're left with dr d theta squared. And if we look at the next term, uh, we see that, well, we have minus two, and then we have dr d theta, uh, r of theta, cosine of theta, sine of theta. And we have the same thing here, so this is plus, so uh, those terms cancel each other out. And similarly to the first uh, two terms that we looked at, we can factor out r of theta, or excuse me, r of theta squared. And that just leaves us with sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta, which by the Pythagorean theorem is 1. So now we know that um, what's under the radical here, uh, dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared, is actually just equal to uh, dr d theta squared plus r squared of theta, but we're considering r as a function of theta anyway, so we can just write um, r squared d theta. So you see that we went from our usual uh, param or usual formula for um, arc length of, some, of a curve and some parameterization, and deduce from that that if we're using polar coordinates, then that parameterization must be uh, given by this formula, which is exactly what we were asked to find in the first place.